Education in America is a mess. What will fix it? Who might fix it? Somebody needs to fix it! You can do it! <laughs> Oprah thinks this woman can fix it. Thank you, Michelle. I'm working for you. Thank you. Michelle is Michelle Ree. Michelle Ree as acting chancellor. Five years ago, Mary Adrian Fenty picked her to manage DC schools. You had never run a school system before. I had never run a school before. Uh, and that's why people thought that Adrian Fenty was nuts. You know, I was a 37 year old girl from Toledo, Ohio. And people said, What? Who? Yeah. People said he's lost his mind. Her friends said she'd lost hers. I have two kids, two daughters, nine and 12, and they, I put them in the D.C. public schools. The schools were a disaster. Test results among the worst in America. <laughs> Chancellor Ree quickly learned that although only 8% of D.C.'s kids were on grade level, there was something odd about how the teachers were ranked. When I looked at the performance evaluations of the adults in the system. How good is the adult doing? Right, how good are the, are the teachers doing? I found that 95% of the adults were being rated as doing a great job. So how can you have a system where all the workers are thinking, we're doing a great job, you know, a great job for our kids, and what we're producing for them is 8% success. She visited schools and saw empty classrooms. I walk into this one school. I go into the first classroom five kids in the classroom, second classroom, nine kids, third classroom, three kids, seven kids. I'm thinking, what is going on? So finally I get to like the fifth or sixth classroom and I asked the teacher, I said, where are all the kids? And she said, well, it's Friday. I thought, really? I just couldn't believe that that was the answer. So I said, is that, is that all? And she said, no. I thought, great. Okay, she's going to tell me that some of the kids are on a field trip or something like that. And she said, it's raining, too. But it turned out that not every classroom was empty. Attendance varied by teacher. So I'm walking through. I'm finishing, you know, my, my visit. And I walk into one classroom, and there are 30 kids in this classroom. There, in fact, are not enough desks for the number of kids that were there. So there are kids sitting on the radiators and whatnot. So I go to one of the kids, and I said, what do you think about the teacher? He said, this is my best teacher, bar none. As I was leaving the school, uh, and this was about at 10 o'clock in the morning, that young man and two of his friends were walking out of the school in front of me. So I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, excuse me, young man, where do you think you're going? And they said to me, well, our first period teacher, the one that you saw, he's great, so we came to school. But our second period teacher is not so good, so we're going to roll. And I thought, okay, this is not the picture that the American public have in their minds of truants. These children were making a very conscious decision to wake up early and to come to school for first period because they knew they were going to get something out of it, and then to leave after that because they weren't going to get any value out of it. And this great teacher, he gets paid no more than all the other teachers. That's right. Gets paid no more. If we were doing seniority-based layoffs, would have gotten laid off first. So Ree decided she'd pay good teachers more and fire bad teachers. And that did not go over particularly well. Ree must go! Ree must go! A few weeks into this, I was visited by, by my then general counsel, and he sort of comes rushing into my office, and he says, you've got to stop firing people. I said, why? Why? I mean, if, if, if people are not doing the jobs that they're supposed to be doing, uh, we need to move them out. And he said, well, welcome to D.C. public schools where we never fire anyone. But you did fire a lot of these people. Eventually we did. Ree found a 90-day loophole that let her close some lousy schools and fire some teachers. There's nothing short of a firestorm surrounding the future of the D.C. public school system. 30 school principals are being terminated this no week. No shortage of outrage tonight among parents and teachers. It was a plan, a plot, even before she took the job to get rid of uh, people who have been around who have tenure. So you fired 200 or 4,000 teachers. You closed 15% of the city's schools. Fired your own daughter's principal. That was a, a chilly night at home. She upset families communities, students, and teachers. A lot of people got fired. She said they deserve to be fired. The system needs change. Well, many of those thought she needed to be fired. People really hated you. Hate you still. Yeah, yeah. I was a Wicked Witch of the West. They called me the Hatchet Lady, the Dragon Lady, the Teacher Terminator. Big Bad Witch. 
Time Magazine even put you in the cover with a broom. I actually took the broom to mean, you know, sweeping house. The blob didn't want their house swept. The union says poorly performing teachers need a second chance. Don't you have some union teachers who are just lousy? We need to lift up the low performers and help them do better. I have not... You're not just fire them. Sorry, maybe teaching is not, not for you. There's a cost to fire teachers. The quality of life of that person is deeply affected by that termination. So they are so nobody should ever be fired? Well, what we should do is help people improve their skills. People uh, would say to me, well, if a teacher is not effective, you should talk about spending the time and effort to professionally develop that person, right? I'd say, okay, but whose children are we going to put in that classroom for this year? Who are you going to practice on? Right. Who are you going to say, oh, and it didn't work out. Sorry. I mean, you only get one chance at first grade. So she changed the policy. I made the decision that we were going to do the layoffs by quality instead of seniority. And this really upset the apple cart. And people, you know, were protesting. Why would it upset the apple cart? It's just common sense to do it's it by quality. It's common sense to you and me, but it was absolutely counter to what the district had always done. It's the way that unions operate, right? I mean, seniority sort of... It just them. cheats the good young teacher. Don't they get mad? Forget the young teachers. First. It cheats the kids. Kids were a little less cheated under Re. Test scores went up when she was chancellor. But in the end, the union won. You can get her out. You can get Fenty out. We're going to fight. If we, if we have to be here every day, all day, all night, we will. The mayor who appointed her was voted out. And when he lost, Re quit before she was fired. Michelle Ree becomes a casualty of D.C. politics. So Ree lost in D.C. But elsewhere in America, all sorts of new schools are succeeding. And exciting things are happening. Do your kids have a good teacher? How do you know? Maybe the teacher next door is better. Maybe there's a better teacher in another state. Maybe there's a world's best teacher or several. Wouldn't it be great if your kids could have that teacher? Well, today, Yes, you can. Yay, I got it. Yeah. Oh, wow. These kids are this excited about a math website. It's amazing. Negative four, minus four, and we are done. It taught me a lot of things. Five years ago, hedge fund analyst Sal Khan created videos like these to tutor his cousin. That worked out well, so then I started tutoring her brothers and more cousins and all the rest, and I had to do the same lecture over and over again. So I had a friend who, who said, hey, Sal, why don't you uh, put some of your lectures on YouTube? I decided to <laughs> give it a shot. Welcome to the presentation on Basic Edition. Soon, thousands watched his lectures. I started getting letters from people and uh, comments on YouTube, and they are, they're not like, hey, I think this kind of might have helped on my math exam. They're like, I got a, I failed calculus the first time. I've started watching the videos. Now I'm acing the class. The YouTube numbers kept rising and he got letters from the Middle East, Africa. What Saul Khan has done is amazing. Now Khan is funded by Bill Gates and he offers web lectures on everything from history to economics to computer science. His videos are viewed millions of times. Not only is it reaching millions of students right now, but even if, you know, God forbid, I got hit for, by a bus when I walked outside, it'll still be able to reach millions of, and maybe eventually billions of students. You just happen to be good at teaching? Well, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> it is a compliment. He's a great teacher. I hope that helps. See you in the next video. It's really helping us learn a lot more. It's exciting that he gets kids so excited about math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In most parts of life, things have gotten much better. Cars, computers, cell phones. Education, not so much. Right. You know, you, you rewind, I don't know, 80 or 90 or 100 years, and you would have the local band that, you know, if you, if you had a party, <laughs> that, that was the only gig in town. Each village might have Each a village. storyteller exactly. or a singer. Exactly. Exactly. But then once you have mass media coming out, then they'll say, wait, why don't we take the best musician, the best actor, uh, the best storyteller in whatever way, and record it and put it out on radio, put it out on, on records or, you know, or whatever. And I think, in theory, that could have happened with education before. But it hasn't. Even for basic math, multiplication tables, I thought they'd be using video games. Yeah. Why not? 
there's a huge bureaucracy, most of which wants to say no to change the system. It's and the blob, people it's, call it. It's the blob, and it is. And, and I think what's fun from our point of view is that we are able to reach students outside of the blob. This California school district started using Khan's videos in fifth grade classrooms. The teachers were skeptical, but now they're impressed at what it does for the kids. They're happy to walk in the door every morning. They're excited about math. It isn't, oh, we're doing math. It's like, oh my gosh, we have math this morning. That's great. She was like learning new things. We assume that most people on their own don't want to do, don't want to learn, or don't want to get engaged in mathematics. And yeah, but, I, but I, I think they're just frustrated because they're, they're, most of them are in classrooms that are not catering to them. At first, teachers worried that the online instruction could replace them, but. I think it's so wrong, as my teachers would tell you, they have taught more math than they've ever taught before. Now, teachers can tutor kids one-on-one. -on -one. I noticed you were having some issues with fractions. You can go at your own pace. And because kids can go at their own pace. So I've got students who are still working on easy multiplication, and then I've got students who are working in high school math. Some kids enjoy Khan's lessons so much, they study at home. Some of them are doing two and three hours a night at home when I'm asking for 15 minutes. When I'm at home and I have some time, I just log on and it's way more fun to do math. So finally, after all these years of kids being bored in school and not learning math, that's over? I, I, I think it might be. Hope so. If it happens, it'll be thanks to those online classes or the charter schools or other experiments that break out of the union-dominated government monopoly. Let a thousand flowers bloom. It's competition that's given us better medicine, transportation, technology, everything. Don't our kids deserve that too?